my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. God bless you. We're so glad that you're part of the word and worship ministry of the St. Paul Baptist Church, 1123 Center Street, Racine, Wisconsin. And again, I am Bishop Lawrence L. Kirby, and we are here just to give worship and praise to the Lord. We hope you're joining with us no matter where you are. Today is a good day to be thankful. Today is a good day to be praiseful. Today is a good day to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you go and push the share button? I wish I feel that you would share this word and this worship with others. Amen. Tell them St. Paul Church and Bishop Kirby are here with the word and worship ministry. Again, the Lord be with you, and may God just keep smiling on you, and you will know that we are praying for you. We pray that God will just keep on, keep it on, making a way for you and yours, and we all just thank God that is well with us as it is. As we worship the Lord today, uh, our deacon Daniel will come and read a brief passage of scripture and lead us in a time of fervent prayer. Then our praise singers will come and, and just lead us in a time of singing and a time of worship. And all the people of God said amen.
the disease that's going on. And Lord, we know that you can see us through it. You can do for us what we need, God. One day, Lord, we're going to have to close our books, close our Bibles, our hymn books. Lord, we know that you say you go away in the world. You are. We may be also. And we're looking for for that joyful day, Lord. We, we know we ain't here to stay. But it's all about you. And thank you for doing what you have did. Just help us to prepare ourselves for a continuous journey. And thank you for a heavenly home yeah. that we can look forward to. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for our church home. Thank you for our state, our this country. Thank you for what is needed. And we look to you, Lord. You is the one that can take care of whatever we're going through. That seem to be lacking in our communication, Lord. There's those that right now are going through a remit. You know what they need. Yes, sir. Thank you for your grace and your mercy yeah. and your comfort. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for each one here. I'm going to ask you, Lord, to let your Holy Spirit dwell with us. We ask you, Lord, to prepare our minds for the good news of the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Help us to look forward to being that which you would have us to be. And forgive us for our life and our many sins. Yeah. Yeah. And help us to know that we are striving to do better each day and forgive us for not doing what we know that we should be about and thank you for what you have did for us and help us to continue in faith and thank you for your love we ask it all in the name of Jesus and for his sake, Amen
in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And all the people of God said amen, amen, amen. amen. Again, you are a part of the Word and Worship Ministry of the St. Paul Baptist Church, 1123 Center Street, Receive Wisconsin, and I am Bishop Lawrence Kirby. We're so glad you're a part of our ministry today. You can meet us at our website, www.stpaulbaptistrecede.org. We also want to encourage each and every one of you to give in support of the ongoing ministry of this church, the worldwide ministry of the St. Paul Baptist Church. You can drop your gifts off on Sunday mornings between 9 and 11 a.m. if you live in the Racine area. You can call the church at 262-632-1467. And one of our deacons and church leaders be glad to come and pick up your tithes and offerings. And of course, those of you who will, we hope you will download the Gimplify app and go to St. Paul Baptist Church. You know you're at the right place. You can see a picture of me, Bishop Kirby, and a picture of our church. And please give your tithes and your offerings. I am particularly talking to those who are members, amen, of the St. Paul Church. We might continue to do ministry here in the city we're seeing across this nation, and yes, even around the world. Also, we want to say to you that our Bible study is each and every Wednesday, Wednesday in the Word, wonderful Wednesday. Please join us as we continue our study from the theme, God is our helper. God is our helper. Would you please make sure to come to our Facebook page and uh, uh, to YouTube and be a part of our Word ministry each and every Wednesday. Amen. God bless you. Know that we're praying for you. I do want to encourage each and every one of you uh, to please register to vote if you've not done that. And let me also say to you, if you're going to do voting through mail, take care of that right away. Go on and get your ballot. Amen. Make sure you fill it out. Make sure you sign your name. Make sure that witness signs that ballot with you or for you. And make sure your address is on it. And get it sent in in plenty of time. Please, ma'am, please, sir, do not wait until the last minute. All right? All right? Well, we're praying for you. We are still in the midst of this pandemic, and we pray that God will bring deliverance or bring a vaccine in the near future. But up to then, I want to, as always, encourage each and every one of us to practice social distancing. Will you do that? Will you do that? Let me encourage each and every one of us to wear a mask whenever we are in a public place and in close proximity to other people. Let's, as I always say, pay attention to our medical professionals and our scientists and the CDC. Let's make sure all of us do all we can to make sure we are all safe and healthy. Would you please do that, brothers and sisters? Amen, amen. I pray for those of you who are victims of this pandemic or who have loved ones who had COVID-19 or still have it, or those of you who grieve because of the moving on of one of your loved ones, know, know, know that Bishop Kirby and the St. Paul Church are praying for you and yours. If you have a special prayer request, you can inbox us. We'd be glad to pray with you and pray for you. If you want to call the church office and leave a message, you can do that. Again, that number is 262-632-1467. And may the Lord bless you real good as I pray today and every day. I'm going to continue the sermon I started last Sunday from the book of Job. So why don't you get your Bible and turn to the book of Job, chapter number one, and that'll be our place for preaching and teaching today. But I kind of want to introduce this sermon uh, by one of the great hymns of our church. Uh, the Lord will make a way somehow. This hymn was written by Dr. Thomas A. Dorsey. And I'm going to ask our music staff, just play that through for us a couple of times. Then I'll come back to you and share the word. If you know it, you can just sing along with it. Music staff is there playing the song. The Lord will make a way somehow. Thank you. 
In all this, Job did not sin, nor charge God with wrong. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord stands forever. I want to preach, teach again tonight or today or this morning from the subject, when bad things happen to good people. And I did borrow uh, this subject from Rabbi Kushner, I believe it is, who wrote this book, I think back in the 1970s or so. I read it while I was in the Bible college back in the day, and, and I was just thinking, amen, about the life of Job as it relates to this. And I tried to introduce this sermon last week by talking about living in a fallen world, the devil is still going to and fro. He's still going up and down. And he's still seeking who he can trouble or devour. I, I try to tell us that living in a fallen world, we sometimes will be tested as Job was, tried, and maybe even tempted as we go through the living of these days that God has given us. I share with you that in the book of Job, God attacked Job's family, and our families are not off limit. He attacked Job's finance, and I try to tell us that during this pandemic, many of us know what it's like to have our finances under attack. He attacked Job with his friends. Sometimes your friends come and, and instead of them encouraging you, they discourage you. And then he attacks Job's flesh. Job got sick. Balls all over his body from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. But the Bible tells us in all this Job sinned not, not charged God with wrong. I think about Job, but not only that, but I think so much about this song written by the late Dr. Thomas A. Dorsey, um, who lived in Chicago back in the day and who really made gospel music uh, famous in the church. You know, when Dr. Dorsey started writing, these songs way back in the day for going to put him out of church. Uh, they said it sounded too much like the blues. But he just kept on writing these songs and, and because I believe it was songs that God gave him. And the reason why I say that is, is because Thomas Dorsey went through so much. I was reading about his life the other day and he was out of town on his way to St. Louis and uh, got a call uh, that his wife had died giving birth to their son. And if that wasn't bad enough, I'm talking about the tag, if that wasn't bad enough, then his son died a couple of days later. Now, just imagine that you're out of town doing ministry, trying to help somebody, and get a call that your wife died, and right after that, your son died. That would have probably been enough to tear some of us apart. Right. But out of his affliction, out of his pain, he continued to trust God. Out of the agony of that situation that all of us would call a bad situation, he wrote the song, Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. Out of a life of tragedy, he could write a song like the hymn we sung and we played today, the Lord will make a way somehow. And of course our lives are often that lack of ship that's tossed and driven. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're battered by the angry sea. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes the storms of life will rage and the fear it will fall on me. Sometimes like Job, you wonder what I've done that made my life so hard, made this race so hard to run. Yes. But Dr. Thomas Dorsey said, take courage. Take courage. Don't worry. Be patient. Because the Lord will make a way. Somehow. It is my hope and prayer today. 
that that is your testimony. That you're not going to give up on God. No matter what it is you're going through right now, be like Joe, be like Dr. Thomas Dorsey, and keep on trusting God because God will make a way. I want to say four things about this text. I may not be able to discuss them all with you today, but I want to give them to you. You may want to write them down so you remember them later. Four lessons God teaches me, and I hope you get them out of this uh, teaching in Job chapter 1 as well. The first thing is that when bad things happen to you, when the storm of life are raging, when, when, when there's trouble in your finances, in your family, or amongst your friends, or your flesh, let's do what Job, what does Job do? When you read the text, it says that he stood up. And that's the first part of the message. When you're going through your valley, your trials, your tribulation, no matter what they are, learn from Job that you ought to learn how to stand up. It's clear here in verse number 20. When Job heard about all these things that happened, verse 20 says, Then Job arose. Principle number two. Not only do we stand up and that gets us through the difficult days of living, but the second thing we learn from Job about this situation is that he started worshiping. He stands up and verse 20, the last part of verse 20, you read it with me, says he started worshiping. You see that and Job stood up to all his clothes, shaved his head as a sign of humility and fell down to the ground and worshiped God. He fell down and he stands up then he starts worshiping. Lesson number three, how do we get through the living of these days? What can I learn from Job? He submits to the, to the sovereignty of God. He submits to the sovereignty. He stands, he starts, and now he submits to the sovereignty of God. Verse number 21, and Job said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave sovereignty. The Lord takes away sovereignty. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Principle number four. How do I get through the difficult days of living? I stand, I start, I submit, and then I stay focused. God is talking to somebody today, and God is saying to you, I know what you're going through, but what I'm saying to you today that will help you get through is to stay focused. Start, stand, submit, and stay. You can remember those four words, can't you? Can't you? Can't you? Let's look at it. Let's look at it. The Bible says here, and Job arose. Now, 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 when you, when you think about it, at least when I think about standing up, several things come to my mind as it relates to that. One thing that comes to my mind is this. I might be down, but ain't no stay down. No matter what I'm going through, I'm not, hear me, I am not, why don't you make this resolve? I am not going to let it keep me down. So in spite of all that had gone wrong, in spite of all that had gone wrong in the life says, and Job stood up. Yeah. And Job arose. Yeah, and I think I'm going to say it again. I think Job was saying to the devil, you might knock me down, but you ain't going to knock me out. I, I, I think Job uh, was saying uh, to the enemy, and even to those friends who doubted it, I might have been down, but my position is not going to stay in that same way. I'm going to stand. Listen, God may be saying, it. yes, he is. No matter what you're going through, God said, stand up. Arise. Get on your feet. Trust God for your victory. <clears throat> to stand up not only means I'm not going to let this keep me down, but it also suggests that I still got confidence. I still got confidence. No, no matter what it looked like, I can 
still stand. I've got the confidence that the Lord God, who is my Savior, did not bring me this far to leave me. I've got confidence that if God brought others through, he's going to bring me through because I'm his child too. Listen, listen. The devil is trying to destroy your confidence. The devil is trying to get you to act like you cannot make with the help of God. But no matter what you're going through, I'm talking to somebody. No matter what you're going through, God said, don't lose your confidence. Just keep on trusting in God. Yes. Dr. Dawson, let me go back to him. He said, no matter what happens, your life might be tossed and driven. But he says, take courage. He says, don't worry. He said, be patient. Because I, we, you have confidence in the God that has brought you this far. What is the words of that great hymn of the church, Amazing Grace? Through many dangers, toys, and snares, I have already come. Was grace that brought me, saved us for confidence, and grace will lead me on. When you stand, it suggests not only confidence, but it suggests this, you will not be defeated. You will not be defeated. Sometimes the devil hits you in every direction. And the devil is trying to get you to throw up your hands and say, you got me, you got me. I can't make it. But when the devil knock you down, you get back up and look at him and say, I ain't defeated. <clears throat> Matter of fact, sometimes you need to talk to the devil and tell him, and I don't know I'm not defeated, but I ain't scared either. There's nothing you can do to get the best of me because I trust in the Lord. And the God that I serve is bigger than anything you ever do in my life. I am not defeated. I am still a conqueror. I am still a winner. I am still going to get victory. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You might
I try to say to us, we're going to get through these times that we're going through, we got to stand up. And the second thing I try to say to us, if we're going to get through these things we're going through, we got to start worshiping. The Bible says, and Job stood up, and then Job bowed down as an act again of humility, and began to worship God. He began to worship God. Listen, when we worship God in a genuine way, it blesses us. We always get something out of true worship. When I say true worship, I'm talking about the worship that Jesus talked about in the Gospel of John, chapter number four, when he said the true worshipers of God shall worship him in spirit and in truth. So no matter where you are, you may not be in a church building, as we call it. You may not be in a sanctuary at a different address, but you can make your house you can make your living room. You can make your bedroom. Maybe in the car. Maybe want to pull over. Amen. And just put the car in park and make that a sanctuary. And start worshiping God wherever you are. The way to get to is learn how to worship your way through. Worship does so much for us. I wish I had time to tell you all of it. But, but, but worship focuses your mind. How many know that sometimes you lose focus? Sometimes your mind just drift on stuff. It all if you can get somewhere and get in the presence of God, if you worship God, and in the words of the old folk, worship God right, it'll focus your mind because your mind will be stayed on you. That's what the old saint said. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I'm walking and talking. I'm, I'm singing and praying. But listen, when you worship God, you'll take your mind off yourself. You'll take your mind off your problem. You'll take your mind And Job worshipped. And worship helped him. I'm going to say it again. I can't use this word focus. God must be trying to get through to somebody. Worship helped him to get his mind focused. You know so much stuff can happen on to you in life. And if you start looking at that stuff going on, it's enough to drive you crazy. Yeah. Hear what I'm saying to you. But God is saying to you today, are you listening to me? God is, are you really listening to what I'm saying to you? God is saying to you today, worship. Yeah. Worship. Yeah. Worship. Go on and give God a praise. Go on and give God a hallelujah. Go on and give God a thank you, Jesus. When you worship, it'll help your mind. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. How in the world can I have the mind of Christ? No matter what I'm going through, I get it through worship and praise of God. Worship not only helps your mind get focused, but worship encourages your heart. Worship encourages your heart. Have there been times in your life when you just felt so discouraged and you felt so down and, and how you, it looked like nobody cared about what you were going through. The folk who you thought were called didn't call and folk thought would help didn't help and some damn evil said, well God, where are you in? You're not in. Listen, I dare you to push your way to worship. I dare you to press through that thing and, 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 and start worshiping God. And what would happen is God would encourage your heart. God would encourage your soul. God will put something down on the inside of you that will show up on the outside of you and you just learn Yourself. No matter where you are, in the private 
residency at the old bedroom in the privacy and the old living room and get to the idea of the family room of wherever you are. If you can do that job and just start working with God, you'll get a breakthrough today. What should, what should, what should, have your mind and have your heart and then, and then, what should, what strengthen your resolve? It'll strengthen your resolve. You, 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 you know, you know, sometimes you just go through so much, you just feel like, oh, I'm just so weak, I just know how, I'm going to make another day. And then you just start worshiping God, Lord, thank you. I thank you that you got all by yourself, Lord, I thank you. You never leave me, you never forsake me. Lord, I thank you, you're so awesome. You just keep on me. And you know what? Somehow or another, God will put strength where you're weak. Somebody here will say it. You know, you know the story uh, of the Apostle Paul, and, and he talks about the thorn he had in his flesh. He was talking about his weakness, his trial, his test, his trouble, his tribulation. And he said, I just kept on praying. I, I just kept on coming to God. I just kept on worshiping God. And then God spoke to me, and God said these words to me. And maybe you didn't hear what God is saying to you today. God said, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is perfected in your weakness. Hear me, hear me. If you can push your way to worship God, He will. Here's what I say, God. God put His super on top of your natural. That's what I call supernatural. Lord, I'm very sorry here today. You know, you know how some you try, some day you try and you flesh and and look like your flesh is too weak. You just know what I'm saying? Don't think you can make it. Don't see how you don't make it. You got that pain in your body and you got that bad report from the doctor. Yeah, yeah, you lost your job. Your finances are short. Your spouse ain't treating you right. Your children are hard headed and rebellious. And look like you're so weak, you ain't hard to make it. But God told me to tell you if you worship Him, He will put strength down on the inside of you. You'd be wondering, where all this come from? I feel like super. I feel like Wonder Woman today. Why? Because you worship. And if you don't worship, God gave you supernatural strength. Are you praying with me today? And not only that, but worship will also energize you. When you feel like you just can't go another further, if you press your way to worship God, God will give you energy. Uh-huh. Yeah. There was a surprise that amazed you. And all I'm saying today is we're going to get through the trials and the tribulations of life. You got to learn how to press your way to worship God and to worship Him in spirit and in truth. All I'm trying to say to you, if you learn how to lift up your eyes to the hill from where your have come from, my God will show up and God will show up.
like he was there for Job. <clears throat> like he was there for Thomas A. Dorsey. Like he was there for me. Yeshua. And show out. In your behalf. Can I pray for you? Can I? Back here is where we are with you. Father God in Jesus' name. We thank you so much that you never leave us alone. Even in our darkest days. And there are many of us who are at a dark place in life right now. Help us to know that we are never alone. I pray right now everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray that you help us to stand up. I pray that you help us to start worshiping. And I pray that we'll watch you again show up and show up. And I pray, I pray for healing. I pray for hope. I pray for him. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, let the Lord. Lord, let the Lord. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it! We know you can hide, I believe you can hide, we believe that you can. I'm going to sound like my voice, I'm going to just praise God, thank you. I'm going to pray to you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus said we pray, believe in your Savior, and all the people of God, sit in your hand. God bless you, praise is my name, God praise you. Listen, listen. If you're not a Christian, if you're not a child of God, you tell me you stand by yourself. If God told you to, you can't do it by yourself. Jesus Christ came to help you. Jesus Christ gave his life and carried to help you. Why don't you, if you're not a Christian, you're not a believer, why don't you have a believer? If I could Jesus Christ, you have a believer. Why don't you stop right now and pray this sinner's prayer? Why don't you say these words by Jesus in Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I accept the finished work of Jesus Christ in my life.